To begin this third and last part of the components review, we're going to review the thumbnails. You can create a nice thumbnail by using the class thumbnail that you can apply on an anchor tag or any other element. And that's going to add some definitions to your images. So on our template, we're going to find some images in order to apply the same styling. So we're going to go further down and find this uh, gallery of images. So this is one row with four images with the same dimensions. And we're going to find this row in our source code. So for that, we're going to go on the fourth row. Here it is. And we have anchor tags to which we're going to add the class of thumbnail. So we're going to now see how it renders on our web page and see we now have a nice border on the first image, far left. So on your HTML page, do the same process, add the class thumbnails on the other anchor tags. And now we have a similar thumbnail styling, which is applied to all images. So that looks pretty nice. So this is a first basic example. So let's see what we can do more. So by scrolling down, we have another example, which is called custom content. Here we can see that we can have an image and also a title, some content that can be wrapped in a div with a class of thumbnail. So now we're going to try to do the same thing by going back to our code. So we're going to replace this anchor tag by a div and we're going to keep the class of thumbnail. And inside this div, after the image tag, we're going to add some space because this is where we're going to place some content. And we're going to call this content the caption. So that's why we're going to create another div with the class of caption. So I'm going to create that div with the class of caption and I'm going to leave some space inside as well. Inside, I'm going to add this H3. So I'm going to copy and paste from here. Here it is. Underneath, I'm going to add also a P tag and add some lorem ipsum. I'm just going to keep one line. And following the paragraph, we're going to add an anchor tag. So that's going to be for the button. To this anchor tag, I'm going to add the type attribute. And I'm going to add a class. So the base class will be btn for the button. And I'm going to add another one, which is going to be for the primary color. Looks like we have everything, so I'm just going to add some information in order to make this HTML markup more clear. So that's always better to add some comments. So here we have our div with a class of caption, which is wrapped by a div with a class of thumbnail. So this is this one. So now we're going to check out the result in the browser. So now we can see that we have a nice thumbnail that contains an image and some text. Although we can see that I forgot to put the label for the button. So I'm going to go back and add learn more to this button. We're going to resave and then check out the result again. And here it is. Now we have a nice thumbnail and also a nice button. Learn more button. I'm going to copy this entire div with the class of thumbnail and I'm going to paste it right here. So to replace this code that only includes an image, but this time I'm going to remove the class of thumbnail just to show you how the layout looks like without the thumbnail. This is kind of ordinary. So we're going to go back and add back this class of thumbnail. And that certainly adds some fanciness to your layout. Nice. We're going to use a little bit of time to talk about the progress bars. The visual is pretty nice, so we'll see that we have different examples, and that can be useful to indicate the progress of a workflow in a team or in situation of project management, for example. So let's have a look at this basic example. And the first step will be to copy this HTML markup. Then we're going to locate where we want to place it on our template. An ideal position for a progress bar could be the top of the page because this is important information to communicate. So we're going to position ourselves after this breadcrumb list. So we're going to create another div with the class of row first. 
Then inside the div, you're going to paste this markup for the progress bar. Let's see the result now. So by reloading the page, here it is. We can see our nice progress bar, although the label is missing. So we can see on the original markup that there is a class of SR only, meaning that this class makes the text invisible to any device except for the screen readers. And in order to change that, very simply, we're going to go back to the code and remove this class. We're going to cut and then save again. So now without the class SR only, we're going to see that now we have our label visible. With the progress bars, we have different variations. And there is one that I like particularly, and this one is animated. So we're going to go copy the class that corresponds to animated. Then going back to our template, we just need to add those two classes right after progress. So now we're going to be able to see the same look. Perfect. So now we can see a progress bar, which is animated. So that looks quite fancy. Next, we're going to look at the panels and we already have an example on our template. So we're going to go check this out. And this is this panel that we can see right under the try now button. Back to the bootstrap documentation, we're going to see how this is structured. So first we have a div with a class of panel body. So that wraps the content of the panel. We can also add a title or a heading by using a div with a class of panel heading. Panel default will apply a color to the panel heading. We'll see that there are different variations later. And right now I'd like to show you that we can also add a footer to this panel by using a div with a class of panel footer. So we don't have that on our template example. So we could certainly add this div with a class of panel footer to our example by going under this closing tag for the div. And then we're going to add a footer. We're going to save and check this out in the browser. So here it is. So now we have a footer that looks pretty similar to the heading. So now we're going to see that we can use variations for the color of the panel heading. So by using these different classes. For example, we're going to use this one first on the list. So that's going to be panel primary. We're going to replace default by primary. Here it is. We're going to save and check out in the browser after reloading the page. And that looks quite nice, although I'm going to remove this footer because that looks kind of weird. So I'm just going to remove this div, resave, and then check this out again. Excellent. We can include any type of content inside the panel, and we're going to see that we have the options to also add tables and list groups. So here is an example of a list group inside a panel. So for that, in order to create it, we're going to place an unordered list right after the div with the class of panel body. So we're going to copy the same unordered list by using the same class, which is the class of list group. So now back to our code, we're going to find this div for the panel body. And below, we're going to paste this unordered list for the list group. So first we're going to indent and save and back to the template. We're going to reload the page and we're going to see that now we have a panel with a nice list group. So I'm going to go back to the code and remove this panel content by removing the div for the panel body. And I'm just going to leave the list group. Here it is. So now we have a list group only inside a panel element. Last on this topic, we're going to talk about the wells that are used to add a simple effect on any element of your choice. And we're going to find an element to which we want to add the same simple effect. So that's going to be this one. So the paragraph with the try now button. So this is this paragraph to which we're going to add a class of well inside the div class. And we're going to write well. So we're going to check out after reloading the page. So here it is. So now we have a nice simple effect that has been applied to this paragraph with the well component.